In this video, we're going to look at a type of problem called magic triangles. You probably have tried problems of magic squares, where you have a square of n rows and n columns, and you need to fill n square numbers into this square such that the sum of each row, each column, and sum of each of the two main diagonals are identical. Magic triangle problems are similar. So you have a triangle and you need to fill the numbers into circles on this triangle such that the sum of each side are identical. Let's look at a simple problem to get the ideas how to solve this type of problems. The problem states fill 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 into the following circles such that the sum of each side is 10. If you count the number of circles in this triangle, they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 circles, and you have 6 numbers, so each circle is going to have a different number. Just want to make sure. So what is most useful approach in solving this kind of questions. The technique I found most useful is to consider extreme values. What are extreme values here? The extreme values are the smallest or the largest. So let's see, the smallest number here is 1, and the largest is 6. Let's first consider where we place the smallest number. Where are the possible places can it be? So for 1, if you have a 1 here, the 1 has to be on one of the rows, right? And if 1 is on one row, then the other two numbers has to be added up to be 9, the sum of the other two numbers. But to add up to 9, if you look at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there are only two possible cases. Either it's going to be 3 plus 6 or 4 plus 5. Okay, so 1 is going to be a um, row of 3, 6, or 4, 5 on the side of 3, 6, or 4, 5. Okay, this is useful, but not that useful. How about if we consider the largest value, 6? Where 6 can it be? If you think about 6, then to make a sum of the side to be 10, the other two number add up has to be 4, the other two numbers. equals 4. Now, what two numbers can add up to be 4? In here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, actually, because 6 is already used. You actually only have one choice. It's 1 plus 3. And this is the key to the problem. Now, you know for the 6, it has to be on the side of 1 and 3. But now think about, can 6 be on the vertex of the triangle? Like for example, can 6 be here? If 6 is here, then these two numbers has to be 1, 3, and these two numbers also has to be 1, 3, and that's impossible. So which means 6 cannot be on the um, vertex of the triangle, right? So 6 has to be on the inner circles. So actually, if you look at all the 6 circles, there are really two types of circles. One is the circle on the vertex or the circle on the inner sides. 
And if you think about carefully, that these three circles are really symmetric, right? If you have one solution, and if you rotate it, it will be still a solution. So this is like symmetric. So are these three circles. They are symmetric. If you can put six here, there's a solution. You also can rotate it, have the same solution. So without loss of generality, you can actually thinking about, you know, place one side to be the side, have the six there. So now we actually deduce that the six cannot be on the vertex or on the kind of outside of the triangle. The six has to be inside, which means that the six has to be one of the circles here. Okay, and without loss of generality, we already mentioned this symmetry, the six we can assume to be here. And these two has to be one and three. Does it matter that one is here, and three is here, or three is here, one is here? Does not really matter because this is symmetric. If you have one solution of one and three, if you flip it, you will have a solution of a three and a one. So if you have a one and three, the same solution also can be three and a one if you flip all the numbers above as well. So we can assume that the numbers are just here is one, and here is three. Okay, so one, six, three. And that's really the key to this question. Once you have one, six, three, and you know that the sum using this, the same idea, one uh, for one, if you have a one here, the two sums to make a 10 is six plus three and four plus five. So this has to be four plus five. Now, where is the 5 in here, 4 and a 5, where the 5 should go. If the 5 go here, the 4 is here. So 4 and plus 3, there has to be a 3. So that's not right. So 4 cannot be here. 4 only can be here. And 5 is here. And then the remaining number, you have to put a 2. Does that satisfy? Yes, it's satisfied. 1 plus 4 plus 5 is 10. 5 plus 2 plus 3 is 10, 1 plus 6 plus 3 is a 10. So here, just a simple recap of this problem is to consider extreme values. You either consider the, where you should place the smallest value or the largest value. And then using logic deductions to um, place the value at very limited choices. And then from there, you can use in try and error to um, try those limited cases. And just want to make sure that you understand the symmetry idea that it does not really matter. You put once you know that six is inside of the triangle, meaning that it's on the inside of the edge, it does not really matter that you put it here or not. So if you think about it, I can put Let's see. If you put a six here, you rotate the whole thing. This is three, this is one, and three, two, five, four, one, right? This is exactly the same solution as this one. They are identical. If I just rotate the whole triangle, uh, I would say 120 degree. Similarly, I can put the six over there the whole solution just uh, rotates another 120 degree. And similarly, you can see that the same solution goes for if I flip 3 and a 1. I said the 3 and a 1 does not really matter. So you put the 6 here. Instead of putting 1 there, you put the 1 there and 3 there. And just flip to everything around this kind of symmetric line. So 2 goes there, 4 goes here and five goes here, and there's another solution. But these solutions are really identical, okay? So this is the sense of symmetry, and then you can say, without loss of generality, I can put the six here, as long as I know the six is inside. By the same token, if you know the six is outside, you can just put six in any of the, the vertex, 
and then you can derive from there. There's no loss of generality. Once you get one solution, you get all kind of identical solutions from there. And that's the end of this lesson.